Hey guys, would you like to check out how to make your very own Nixie clock using Nixie tubes? If that's something you'd be interested in, stay tuned because it's coming up right here, right now on M.I. Sperry. Okay guys, so as the intro stated, we're gonna be checking out how to build a Nixie clock. This has been a video that has been long in the works. I do wanna give a shout out to our friends at JLCPCB. Now, as you know, JLCPCB is a PCB fab house. They do everything from stencils to making PCBs. Uh, they have a whole different line of PCBs. Let's look at it here. They got two uh, all the way up to six layers. They'll also create the stencils for you and they are good top quality stencils. Check out one of my other videos on I review some of their stencils and they do uh, good aluminum metal stencils fantastic the price is all um, uh, absolutely unbeatable the quality is fantastic if you haven't checked them out check them out i've also got a link down in the description where if you sign up for the first time i believe you get free shipping i believe check that out down below link will be in the description so without any further ado let's check out what we're going to be building so today we're going to be building the nixie clock i've got this all modeled up here for us so this is going to be what she's going to look like so let's take a look a little bit deeper into what she's going to look like so let's turn this on off and some of this stuff off so what we're going to be doing is we're going to have our nixie board here that is going to have our nixie clocks on it it's going to be our circuit board that will be then connected to this little circuit board down here represents a uh, uh, basically a power supply because nixie tubes as you know takes a higher and more powerful uh, power supply to run. They take about 130 volts. Now, the power supply I have chosen for this is the Smacken, I guess is the name of it, a high voltage boost converter. Uh, it takes an input of eight to 32 volts and will boost it up to almost 390 volts, selectable by the uh, potentiometer that is on board right there. So, I got a link down in the description. You can check that out. Uh, they're not too expensive, 15 bucks, not too bad. So, grab one of those and that is what this is designed for. Four. So that's what I'm going to put in there and that will hook up via just some wires that will go up to the board. You'll see that in a minute when we head over to the bench to check it out. So basically there's also going to be these little slats that are here that are going to slide in. If you notice this is notched. So there's got a notch right here and it will slide in. So I've got some that are uh, a triangular, the triangles go in and then out, and then they go out and then in, just to just to give it some aesthetics, because you know, I like stuff that looks cool. Now, I did this in black and white filament. You can do this in any color that you want. I will have all of the STLs and these inventor files and everything listed down below in a link to the uh, GitHub repository where this will all be. But what is all of this without a schematic? So this is how we are going to be hooking this up. This is how the PCB will be laid out. And we've got our Arduino at Mega 328P, uh, basically microcontroller that is basically Arduino compatible. You can buy these from Amazon, link down in the description, uh, that come pre-programmed with the Amazon, or Amazon, with the Arduino bootloader. And then that way you can uh, just basically do the bootloader on a chip so if you haven't looked that up check that out you can google it uh or not bootloader on a chip i tell you my brain is going today guys but you can basically do arduino on a breadboard and when you do that that's using the chip i saw people run by there's friends and stuff in here Anyway, guys, we got, uh, so we've got that chip, so we're going to use just the Atmega 328P. We're not using the full development board, just the chip, okay? So, and then we have off of that, let me zoom in a little bit, off of that, we've got two switches. There's our dip switches. Those will be going into that five, four and five, and that's going to be our hour and minute switches, all right? Then we've got our 74LD145 chips that are made by TI that will be the, basically, it's like a, it's like a BCD to seven segment display decoder but it's for a 10 segment display and it can handle the 130 high volt 30 volt dc high voltage so basically you've got the four inputs that go in a b c d you give it a binary number it then selects uh, uh whichever port you ask for with the binary number. so you give it a binary five it will turn uh low it will pull low pin five so this is a negative logic chip so we basically take the anode of our uh, Nixie tubes and we connect that anode to the 130 volt and then we basically 
tell this chip which pin to, on the cathode to pull low, which will then light up the uh, Nixie tube. So Nixie tubes are fairly simple. You just give it uh, 130 volts on the anode, and then you just ground each one of the other pins, and then that causes it to light up, whichever number it is. So anyway, we're going to do that. So we have four of those. Now, one of these, the two down here, that's going to be significant when we get into the coding section. These will uh, share port D. Okay, so port D has two Nixie tubes on it, whereas the other two are separated by ports, by port C and by port B. Okay, that's on there. We'll look at that in the code here for too long. Anyway, so continuing with the hardware, we also use the uh, SCL SDA, basically I squared C bus, the clock and data pins for that we're going to use with a RTC. And yes, we're going to use the famous Dallas semiconductor or basically Maxim semiconductor since they bought them. Uh, 1307 real time clock. Basically what you do with this, very simple. You can even buy breakout boards from Adafruit, I believe, that have this specific chip in it. Very simple chip, very widely used, easy to find. Uh, you basically give it some 4.7K uh, pull up. Sometimes I've reduced that to 3.9, um, but currently I'm showing 4.7. If you have trouble, just reduce it a little bit, give it a little stronger pull up, and uh, it'll start working for you. But uh, 4.7 seemed to work for me. Uh, if you need to, you can reduce it down to 3.9. I have little children running behind me. <laughs> anyway, so we're going to take and uh, put a 32.768 kilohertz uh, crystal on this as well and give it uh, some VCC and ground. I also have a battery uh, clip for it, so you can put a three volt lithium cell battery on it, so that way it remembers what time you have set, even when powered off. That's basically all there is to. We're gonna have a five volt regulator. Here's some power circuitry. Now I wanna explain this a little bit. Um, I thought that maybe there was gonna be some back feed of that 130 volts, so I put this diode in, and then I also made the spot for a zero ohm jumper, just in case I didn't need that diode. Turns out you don't need it. Um, so you can connect your uh, power supplies for these chips uh, straight to five volts and not have to worry about any back feed coming from the 130 volt. Uh, I was just did that as a precaution because, you know, you can always put stuff on a board and then just not populate it. If you don't put stuff on the board, then it's not built into the board. You can't populate it if you need it, so on and so forth. So anyway, guys, that's pretty much does it for the hardware section. This is downloadable from the GitHub uh, repository so you can get this and go over it in more detail if you would like but let's move on to software okay guys so here's the software so we've got our Nixie clock software I even put uh, in the comments kind of the pin assignments for the different uh, ABCD of the Nixie tubes which Nixie tube it was the N1 N2 N3 N4 corresponds to the silk screen that is on the board all right so what this uh, software is going to be doing is it's going to be basically got two functions here one is going to translate it since it's like a negative logic it's going to be backwards is what you would think so I went ahead and built up basically a switch case to uh, take care of that as well as display time which is going to be uh, the function that I use to display it I'm going to be doing some bitwise operations to uh, merge those port D to merge both of them together on port D and do some port assignments so if you've never seen that um, you can do that on Arduinos you can uh, write to the port register and do all ports at once and set them however you want using binary numbers um, so basically that's what that's what that does. We're gonna do some setup work and there's the bulk of it all. We're gonna call the RTC, we're gonna grab the time and then we're also gonna check our minutes and whatnot for setting the time and then at the end we will set the time. So all we have to do is just install this onto your Arduino on a breadboard and check that out. I believe I have some videos on that. I think it was done in a Maker Monday. I don't remember which one, but check that out. I show you how to do the Arduino on a breadboard. I may make an official video on that instead of just being a Maker Monday, but check for that video if, if you, uh, you wanna see how that works. So once we load the software onto our board, that's all we got to do. So let's go ahead and hit the bench and we will check it out running. Okay guys, so now we got everything 3D printed out. We got all of our pieces, got our back plate, got our little buttons. I've cleaned them all up. Uh, we also have a pile of these little side pieces as well as a pile of the long pieces. So gone ahead and put our uh, Nixie clock together. Again, 
Thank you to JLCPCB for providing the boards for this build. Uh, they do all kinds of different styles of boards. They do Hassle, they do uh, Enig, they do uh, all the different types of boards, uh, many different colors of solder masks, um, and all that stuff. It's got silk screen, top quality boards. I am very impressed with them. Uh, their, their turnaround is extremely fast. Uh, I don't know, it just takes a few days to actually get these. So I recommend, the pricing is great. I recommend them. Uh, I don't really talk a whole lot about uh, sponsors before I try them and make sure that they're good. And these guys are great. So thanks to JLCPCB for sponsoring this video and for uh, giving us such great, excellent boards. So anyway, we've got our two buttons for our hour and our minute as well as there's our uh, removable micro. I went ahead and soldered down a socket for it, so that way if I had to reprogram it, we can. And then there are the uh, drivers, driver chips for each one of the tubes, as well as I've got the little power supply. Again, you can find this on Amazon, and the little power supply hooks up with the wires that go through, uh, through the through holes. So this will mount up, the power supply will mount up to these bottom posts, as well as these top bigger posts will uh, mount the actual PCB. So I'm gonna go ahead and get things mounted up. We'll be right back. Okay, guys, that'll about do it. Now, when you're putting screws into these plastic parts, be very mindful of when they bottom out, otherwise you'll break off your, your, your pieces. So, all right, so that's got that all mounted up. So now all we gotta do is add our side pieces. So what are all we're gonna do is these channels that are in the sides. I don't know if you can see that, but I've got channels in the sides. We're gonna just slide that into that channel. See, we're gonna take this, and we will do the same thing with these long ones. These, just make sure that you, you take and you layer them up. Okay, well I'm gonna go ahead and finish up our layering, be right back. Okay, I've got our layering all put together, so that looks, actually looks pretty darn sweet. So now I need the back plate that's gonna go on. So how this is gonna work is I'm going to take our buttons here, and I'm gonna go ahead and put them into the back plate like so. And then our back plate should just slide right in that channel and set right on our buttons. All right, so there we go. So I don't know if you can hear that. So our buttons do work. So there we go, there's that piece. Now all we gotta do is put the top on. I've gone ahead and pre put some screws in it. Um, and then it should just, we should slide it on and it should screw right into these, these side pieces. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started on that. Okay, all right. So there it is, all safe and sound. One piece, looks like we did, we did good. So now all there's left to do is we'll power it up. I'll turn the lights uh, down a little bit. I got a power cord right here, desk lights. Oh, there we go. And there's the original one that we programmed. Now let's see, I hold both buttons. I should be able to change that one and change the hour. And then if I leave it long enough, it should take about five seconds or so and it should be locked in. Let's see if that's enough. Yep, won't change now that I'm clicking it. So, all right, our software works and everything. And I have pre-tested this, so it does increment. I'm gonna let you, I'm not gonna make you have to sit here forever and watch it increment. But it does increment. It looks like that blue is pretty cool. Um, i say one thing that I would probably change about this is I want that blue, I would like to find some Nixie tubes with longer leads, and that way they would stick up further. So I may end up changing these out eventually and getting some Nixies with longer leads and kind of pulling them up a little bit so that you can really see that blue, because that blue looks really cool. But anyway, so anyway guys, that's it for the Nixie clock. I hope that you enjoyed this build. This build took a long time to do because I had a lot of troubleshooting to do with it so I could bring you guys the code, the, uh, the mechanical build out, and the uh, schematic of how to build one of these. If you would like to build one of these, <clears throat> I will have all the schematics and uh, information as far as the build materials, the different chips that are on here. And the chips that are on here aren't the normal ones that you buy uh, off of eBay. These are um, TI chips, they're manufactured, you can order them, but the thing is you need the through hole chips. The through hole chips are what it was. They come in surface mount, but the surface mount package is too tiny. The 130 volts that it takes to power these Nixies busts right through them and it burns them up. So you need the DIP ones because the tolerances are bigger inside the chip and it won't arc across. 
So that's all you need. All that stuff is going to be down in the link in the description. Check it out on GitHub. Uh, I've been posting pretty much all my stuff on GitHub anymore. So check out the link down below if you would like the uh, schematics as well as the STL files to 3D print your own should be down there in a, uh, on the GitHub link as well as it'll be in Thingiverse. For those of you that like to mark things and, and save stuff in Thingiverse, uh, there'll be a link to uh, Thingiverse down below for the 3D models. Also, I put the uh, AutoCAD Inventor files out there as well. So if you want to modify this in any way, shape, or form, feel free to do so. Those are also listed in the uh, GitHub. So guys, with that, I think that ought to do it for this time. Guys, thank you so much for joining me for this build. Thanks a lot to JLC PCB for sponsoring us with the uh, PCBs for this. They've waited a while for me to get this video out because I was having a little bit of issues with it. But hey, that's why I have the issues. So you guys don't have the issues. So take care, guys. Thank you so much. Make sure to like, subscribe, share, hit that bell icon. Check Check out the uh, Google forum while you're at it just to make sure that uh, if you have any questions or anything like that, throw that on that forum. That way we can answer it in a timely manner. That way you don't have to wait on me. And guys, we will see you in the next video.